There's no, there's no sense of ju judging these characters. The reader is very much has to decide or, or not, you know, how to how to approach these. Uh, I. I the part of it that, that I liked least in, in a funny way was the three stories that are linked together because it makes almost a novella. And having been billed as this great short story writer, what I wanted to see was the great short story yeah. writer. And I certainly wasn't disappointed in the rest of the book. The, the, the best one by, for me by far was Tricks, mm. which is where this nurse who is a Shakespeare fan uh, encounters in this relationship with a, a Serbian clockma <laughs> clockmaker. And what's always happening, what links these things together, I think what links all the stories together is all these people are running away from something yeah. and they're finding home and they're not quite sure when they find home, they're not quite sure that they're there or they screw it up somehow mm. or fate in, they, they make a fateful decision, in her case, in this story, the wrong green dress she wears mm. that completely alters the course of her life. And all of them are in search of home but not quite sure they want to get there. And I find that deeply moving. It's a very poignant work. Harry, uh, um, no, no doubt she's a great writer and very, very skilled. You know, as Philip was saying, you do kind of go, God, that was very... Mm. I wish I'd thought of that the whole yeah. way through it. But uh, did you find it a kind of a satisfying read? Because I'm not sure I would have finished this book. Well, I know? think that the, the, the beauty of what she does in terms of craft uh, is that it, these are short stories, and even the, the novella is pretty short, um, that are often about long historical processes. They're about things that happen over very long periods of time. So they become exercises in omission. So you're actually looking at her craft and what she hasn't put in. In fact, in that, in that novella, Penelope's childhood, Juliet's child, Penelope's childhood is essentially missing. We jump from her as a baby to her as an adult. Brief flashbacks into her childhood, but our whole puzzle, our whole emotional involvement is in what happened during that time. But you get one key to it, Harry, where yes. you find out that when her daddy died, she didn't even bother going to well, bring exactly, her and tell yeah. her and bring her to the theater, and that gives the and whole then, thing away. And then also, away. if you see it as a collection a, as a whole, there's another beautifully drawn child of roughly the, sort of the same age Ten. as that, Lauren, mm. in the story Trespasses. Mm. And there's a great sense of sympathy with children and That's of... Right. Uh, of a sense of the emotional burdens we place on children, particularly those of us who are kind of bohemian parents, that's or right. you know, the, how the, much we expect of them. There's, there's a wisdom yes. in this book that, that yeah. you know, I think that's what you're touching on. It's, she's what seventy something now, Alice yeah. Munro. Yeah, you know, she so she, would be, she knows yeah. what she's yeah. talking about, and that comes through. I think. And family relationships. You see, the, the, I agree. Philip's absolutely right. You go back to the home. You see, they're all looking for home, but when they get to the home. It's usually parents or uh, uncles or aunties who have made some kind of mistake and that is visited on them and the character is trying to break out of that or being caught and not being able to break out of it because they don't face it. Okay, we're going to have to leave that one there. Alice Munro's Runaway is selling in hardback for 20 euro. So now to our phone-in competition and our prize tonight is for Alice Munro fans. It's three copies of her latest book along with copies of her earlier works, Beggar Maid and Moons of Jupiter. And the question is, Alice Munro's new book is called Tear Away. Runaway or Don Manway. My, my <laughs> thanks to our guests tonight, Harry Brown, Pat Coyle and Philip Chevron. Next week we'll be joined by Kevin Gildee, Catherine Ann Cullen and Noel Sheridan, who'll be looking at the Kevin Bacon movie The Woodsman, Rough Magic's Life of Galileo, Laurie Anderson at Emma and Moog Doyle's novel of the Irish War of Independence. And live in studio, Paul Tiernan. Before we go tonight, the Graham Ashton Brass Ensemble are internationally known for their innovative style and arrangements. They've played with everyone from the London Philharmonic to Harry Connick Jr. They're on tour around the country with Music Network this week and next, starting tomorrow night in Ross Cray Castle and on Thursday at Dublin Castle. Here with Iron Tetrapod, the Graham Ashton Brass Ensemble. Till next week, good night.